I get so much information just from following you and the information that sort of, I, I guess, kind of made me laugh over the weekend is that when you think about just college basketball, right, we always focus on the players. But then you have some of these coaches and then you have uh, some of the – you have some of the coaches, but then you also have some of the players. And I'm thinking about the program in Purdue because it kind of you brought it up to my attention. Is that Purdue good and bad? Good thing they made it to the Final Four. They kind of got it over the hump. They've been one of these top seeds for so many years. But yet the bad thing is that they still could be bounced in the Final Four by a double digit seed. It's like it's like the good versus the bad. They have an opportunity to lose again to a double digit seed where where they shouldn't. Where how do we view Purdue? Is it winner or it's not a success. How do we uh, view this Purdue basketball team? No, this is absolutely a success already. Matt Painter was in that club that coaches hate to be in, which is like the best coach never to coach in a Final Four, and he got through to that. This team, a year after losing to a 16 seed as a number one seed, they come back and they get to a Final Four. Program gets there for the first time in over 40 years. It, it's 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 all a success. They they want it this way. People wondered if you could play through Zach Eady, play through bigs like that, and actually win in this type of tournament. And they did. They did all those things. It is just kind of hilarious that, of course, their draw in the Final Four is a double digit seed in NC State. Obviously, they're a power conference team. This is a very talented team. We've learned a lot about them in the last couple of weeks. But they did sneak in as an 11 seed, and that's the joke. But this is so different from those early exits that we've seen from those Purdue teams in recent years that kind of got them that moniker that they would always be a one, two or a three or a four seed and they wouldn't get out of the first weekend because again, the style of play or something, they would face a hot team, hot mid major, whatever it might be. And then they finally get through it and they have to go through a team in Tennessee and a coach in Rick Barnes who has a lot of that too. He had been to a final four, but he'd also taken teams that had really good seeds in the NCAA tournament and underachieved. And so that accomplishment cannot be taken away from Matt Painter. It cannot be taken away from this Purdue team and Zach Eady. And you could tell in the post game of how fired up Zach Eady was that this meant a lot to him. It meant a lot to a lot of people. I was talking with Robbie Hummel, who was fortunate enough to be there and called the game. He did a fantastic job as an analyst. And he was telling me he was so surprised at how emotional he felt. He felt like he was in the game because there's just so many people who've seen Purdue fall short and have a lot of talent. And he'd been on those teams. He'd had injuries. And you also just have a lot of people in the coaching community that love Matt Painter and want to see this for him. And so it is already a success. The rest is gravy. But we did see a team that lost to a 16 go on and win it all in Virginia a couple of years ago. So yeah. Purdue is definitely going to try to keep that as a, a perfect two for two with that weird but uh, but potentially awesome historical note. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.